of that balloon. Looks kind of like a jellyfish if you were a turtle, huh? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it took about 10 minutes of walking the beach, and, and uh, isn't that sad? It was washed up in this straw, sea straw. It means it was out there in the ocean. Absolutely it was. One day, about a year and a half ago, watching the news, there was a memorial tribute to a young lady that had passed away, and the local news station was filming this release of 100 balloons. And I knew that while this was a memorial, and while this was done with the intention of honoring somebody that had passed, it was not the right way to do it. The balloons, while they were drifting skyward, were gonna land somewhere. And it saddened me that these people were not thinking about the repercussions of a helium balloon release. Living here on a coastal community, I saw them on the beach. And as I became involved with Nest and Mammal Stranding, those efforts led me to be educated in the effects of these helium balloons. Helium balloons are both latex and mylar. A latex balloon is made from natural plant-based materials, but they add chemicals to them, which makes them last longer. They exist about five to six years before they start to break down. A mylar balloon is made from metal and plastic and petroleum. They exist in our environment for 100 years before they break down. The ribbon lasts for about 150 years. And in doing so, these animals will mistake them for jellyfish. They will mistake them for uh, other forms of food. They will ingest them. They either starve to death because it blocks their digestive tract. They become entangled in these ribbons and are choked. Eliminating balloon releases is something that we need to do. The average balloon travels about 1,300 miles. They're released here on the Outer Banks. They're going out to sea. And if they're out at sea, they're gonna do damage. So I decided that I was going to speak up and start locally for my town and the municipalities around here on the Outer Banks. So I wrote up a petition, which took me several, several months to create. And when it was ready, I went to the town council meetings, which is a great place to voice your concerns. So I addressed balloon releases. I was really excited about the initiative that Debbie Swick took on, not only because of the educational impacts, the importance of not littering in general and, and the impacts it has on the environment. You know, when she first came to me, I was reluctant. I thought, you know, is this really something we really want to get involved in? But the message and the importance is, you know, government sometimes they pass ordinances that are, are meant for it more education than anything. It's about what we believe in. It's about what we stand for. It's just another educational tool that we can use. If we pass an ordinance, what it says is the town of Southern Shores does not want these balloons to be released for any reason because of the damage they do. Well, I am a commercial fisherman <laughs> and I'm sick of seeing those balloons floating around. An, an accidental somebody letting one go coming out of the Dollar Tree is different than a wedding and 30 balloons let go. I don't care where they land. I, I know where they land in all waterways. I have sent out my proposal to all 100 counties and I'm very pleased that Dare County now has it on their agenda to discuss. So hopefully we will make a movement here. I have a Senator that has drafted legislation on the state level. So I'll go after the little fish while he goes after the big fish. I know there are leadership politicians who are looking at big issues, but this is an issue that's solvable. It's so easily solvable. Southern Shores has, has, has jumped in, you know, Duck has jumped in, my town of Nags Head has jumped in, and you know, she's getting results, and it's just one person going to the meetings caring. We can set an example in, in our towns, um, and we did in Duck. We, we really are proud of the fact that this law now and the resolution really give us a stand. We're taking a stand against this, we're educating people, and not only the towns, but even some of our local associations I've understood have really taken that to heart as well. The Wedding Association, the um, Outer Banks Association of Realtors, if they're maybe doing an open house, tying a balloon to a mailbox, now people will think again and they won't do that. Shyness aside, go and fight for what you believe in. Make a difference in the world. Little steps make big steps. And the towns themselves have rallied behind me and, and whispered in my ear words of encouragement and support. Being able to write an ordinance that eliminates both litter and saves wildlife is a win-win as far as I am concerned. Hopefully it's, it's an example, a very good example, 
of someone coming, grassroots, coming before councils, in this case, six towns, one county, and fighting hard to have her voice heard and for her to make the change. Being active, caring about our town, caring about our county, and thank you, Debbie, for all the hard work you do. I'm just real proud of the fact that she convinced City Hall to do the right thing.